H3 prime UTR, terminating in an oligo A tail, as all lines do. TART has two ORF coding for gag-like protein, and coding for reverse transcriptase and endonuclease. Also, this element is flanked by a 5 prime UTR and a large 3 prime UTR. These two elements transpose to the ends of chromosomes and thereby counterbalance terminal DNA loss from chromosomes. What is usual, unusual about these lines is the long 3 prime UTR. About half of their sequence is non-coding due to this UTR. Normal lines have a hardly any sequence that is non-coding for protein. Maybe these sequences are required for the telomere specific recognition and unusual transposition. Maybe they are important for the, inf for the formation of specific chromatin structures at telomeres. But maybe they just serve to increase the amount of DNA added to the chromosome end with each transposition. Let's have a look at how these two elements manage to elongate the telomeres. Both elements are targeted to the ends of chromosomes and they encode a closely related GAC protein. This suggests that the targeting may be due to the GAC protein. These two elements always transpose to the chromosome ends and never transpose into euchromatin. It is likely that the GAC-like protein has some influence on that but maybe they don't even need to be directed towards the chromosome end but they are just a favorable location for the elements they are always accessible at the 3 prime end is right there to serve as primer and no nick is required we regard here the example of HET A HET A encodes GAC protein GAC protein is required in cis and may be responsible for targeting the RNA intermediate to the chromosome ends. It joins to the telomeric DNA with its oligo A in centromere's proximal orientation. No specific sequences are required at the targeted end. Reverse transcriptase copies the RNA into DNA. Second strand synthesis is done by cellular DNA repair enzymes. The new DNA is ligated and the element has successfully elong elongated the telomere. However, it was found that they, these elements do not prevent terminal loss, but rather counterbalance it. DNA is still gradually lost from the terminus at a rate indistinguishable from loss of non-telomeric sequences. The transposons are always added onto the distal end of the element previously at the terminus. Interestingly, they all have the same orientation, their oligo A facing the centromere proximal end of the element. So when one element is added, it is subject to terminal loss. Another transposition adds more DNA to the terminus. Also this element will be subject to terminal loss and then another element will be added at the end always in the same orientation but how does it balance the terminal loss if every time an element transposes to the end it is subject to terminal loss you have to consider that the amount of DNA adding during added during one tran terminal transposition by a long element is much larger than a amount of DNA lost during chromosome replication. In this way additions don't need to occur very fre frequently and they don't because the buffer is quite large. We want to try to explain how this polarity comes about. Normal lines make a nick in the target DNA and use the 3 prime end of it as a primer for reverse transcriptation TART and HET A might use the 3 prime end of the terminal DNA as a primer for reverse transcriptation of the first strand. This explains the invariant polarity of the inserted elements. HET A was found to have an exceptional promoter. Normal lines have their promoter 
<coughs> in the five prime UTR and the transcription start sites are upstream of the promoter. In contrast to usual downstream start of pole 2 promoters. This is very usual for elements that transpose via RNA intermediate because this way the promoter region gets transcribed and will be present in the new location. For head A is different. The promoter is in the 3' prime UTR and direct transcriptation of the element downstream of it. Head A show a sense of togetherness. It takes two of them to work. One element provides a promoter, the other element serves as template for transcriptation. This is also an explanation of why these elements occur in a head to tail array. They need this district array to be transcribed. Each head A element must wait for another head A to transpose to its 5 prime end to acquire a complete copy of a new promoter so it can be transcribed.